We have always been told that we have one cognitive function that we use more often than others. We have been told that our personality type is what we do most often. We're categorized, labeled by our persona, by the mask we present ourselves as to the world. But what if that's not who we really are? Today, we're going to talk about saviors and demons and objective personalities alternative approach to typing. Today, we're going to talk about what I call the MBTI Jungian flow state. This is the most important video that you can watch on objective personality type because this video contains the key to how you can type and understand yourself. Yeah, if you can understand what you do in a state of flow, in a so-called savior state, and if you can understand what you're like in a state of stress, a so-called demon state, then you can know your true personality type. We have been using Jungian theories purely to label and to categorize people. We've been putting people in boxes and that's all we've been doing. Okay, you go in that box and I go in that box. That's all we've been doing. But what if Jungian theories could be used to understand flow, mental well-being and happiness? It's only when we start putting uh, personality psychology in the context of flow that we can start to understand what we can do in order to live a happy and fulfilling and meaningful life. So, so what is a savior state and what is a demon state? Before we get started with this video, I recommend to check if you are subscribed to the channel because I am going to be doing a full rundown on objective personality so you can learn all to use and apply all their concepts to better understand yourself, your friends and your family members. Now, let's get started. Saviors and demons is, I would say, the core, the core coin of how we were able to break into objectively right. tracking personality type. And that is because we did not look at functions like how everybody else does, where it's uh, preferences, or I'm a user, uh, you know, the dominant function and the tertiary and all these little stupid terms, right? We saw from going through some really hard times in life that these functions were what we were, as people, like blaming the problems of the world. And this, this happened as we started logging personality types. We would objectively type somebody, which would take hours or, or even days. And after a few hundred people that you've sat here and you've learned all about their life and watched tons and tons of videos on them, you start to see some damn path. Yeah. And it gets very embarrassing because all these fears that I have that I think are so real and this person's out to get me and I, I suck at this and this insecurity and right. you don't even know and this is impossible and I can't, all this bullshit. I've been telling myself for fucking decades, right? You see these other people saying the same damn thing. I mean, so we're, we're getting video interviews of people crying in their bedroom and really, you know, getting very huh. open and honest about their life. And you're, we're seeing this at mass scale. And we start to see that for the IJ, the Antichrist is in chaos. Right. So they'll get very into conspiracies and afraid of the government's out to get you right. and the world's going to end and it just gets very amped up and very panicky. Then the EP is the reverse. They're afraid of the cops. They're afraid of the man. They're afraid of somebody coming hmm. to control them. <laughs> Don't put your S-I-F-E on me. And then the EJs, those are a lot easier to see because they're so outgoing and extroverted and then they just crash and melt down because they have no identity. They don't know who they are. They've exhausted yeah, themselves and they hate themselves and they feel like shit. And then the IPs, those are lo take a little longer to see because they're so damn quiet. But you start to realize as you watch several hundred videos of IP people, how fucking delusional they are about their identity in the tribe. So everybody's fucking nuts. And a it's, it's not there. that your third function and your fourth function are the less. It's like, no, the, the, your lower, your, exactly. de your two demon functions, you know, they may be your bottom two and they may not yeah. be your bottom two. Maybe your second and fourth for some people. Anyways, these are the things that we blame in life as the fucking worst problems yep. in the world. What I'm going to show you today is how to use this powerful energy to track personality type. And here's something that we used early on, a this little lesson that we used in a little small group here. Now, let's clarify some definitions here. If I understand objective personality correctly, what they are saying is this. Your demon function or the inferior function is the function that you represents what you think is wrong with the world. Your savior function represents instead 
what you think will fix the world. So imagine that's true. That's a pretty controversial statement. Imagine that our perception of what's wrong with the world and our perception of what will fix the world is not actually the result of us being objective and smart and having figured out the truth, the secret of life. What if we are psychologically biased to think the world is supposed to be a certain way because of our personality type? If that statement is true, actually almost all political conflict in the world is going to start to appear pointless. Are these just people? Are these just extroverted perceiving types and introverted judging types arguing over whether we should have more control or more freedom? Is that what's happening here? And if so, should that be happening? Is that smart? Is that how we should be doing politics? I don't know the answer to that, so let's zoom back to the individual level. Basically, what they are saying here is that the savior function shows up when we are full of positive psychic energy. Essentially, we're feeling good, we're feeling great, we're feeling happy, we're feeling excited, we're feeling positive, we're feeling confident in ourselves, we're asserting ourselves, we speak more loudly, more passionately, we have more energy in our statements, we uh, focus on what we can do and how things can be fixed, we have a solution mindset. That's the savior state. And then the demon state. The demon state shows up when we are angry or sad or upset, when we feel hurt, when we feel misunderstood, when we're talking about how difficult everything is and how horrible everything is. The demon state represents the other side of the coin. You have two coins, you have happiness, you have sadness, and those are the two coins of life. You know, those are the things you tend to flip behind. Now we're getting into the really good stuff and the really interesting stuff. It was about five years ago when I had this massive discovery. I had been so caught up in trying to categorize and label people, but I never understood why. What's the purpose of labeling people? Why am I even doing this? The realization only dawned on me when I started to look into positive psychology. And then we have Mihaly Sjeshimentali. <laughs> and oh my god, I cannot say that name out loud. loud but he said, and he coined the term the flow state, and he said flow is being completely involved in an activity for its own sake. That means the ego falls away, time flies, every action, movement and thought follows inevitably, naturally from the previous one, like you're playing jazz music. And boy, he must really have loved jazz music. I can say personally, I'm also a massive fan of jazz music. Um, what I discovered and what I think is so interesting is that personality psychology can be used to understand how we can enter into a flow state. Basically, everyone has an individual path to flow and to happiness. Every personality type associates happiness with different activities. One personality type associates happiness with going out and doing things, and another personality type associates happiness with going inside and reflecting. And so we have to figure out what we personally need to do in order to feel happy. And we're going to have to stop listening to other people, other people telling us, oh, if you only lived like I do, you'd be so much happier. You know, <laughs> don't listen to them. They're not, they don't know what they're talking about. They're asserting, projecting their own needs and their own values on you and telling you that uh, and assuming that you are just like them. But that doesn't have to be true. That doesn't have to logically follow. We don't actually all have to be exactly the same. All right, let's get started. So when you're sitting at a coffee shop and you're eavesdropping, as you always do, and you're listening to the people behind you, you're, you're kind of dialing on their conversation. Why? Because one of the two people are starting to get a little bit animated. And so they're standing out from all the background noise. Now, what is background noise? Background noise is kind of like this. We'll do a little graph where it's just kind of these little seismic waves where it's up and down and everything's fine. And then you'll start to hear these spikes. And you'll hear one of two spikes. It's either extremely high, you know, positive energy, or extremely low. And every time the lady spikes in a very positive and you don't even know and this was the answer and it was so yeah. amazing and this happened that's the savior function it's usually Definitely. the first function because it's this is this over dominant of high conscious positive energy you wouldn't believe it sally i found the fucking answer to the world and then the opposite side when the conversation gets serious it's usually about 45 minutes in because they've exhausted all their social bullshit and now they're really getting to the good stuff 
and you don't even know. And then they yeah. did this, and, th- and now it's hitting the low spikes. What's that? These are the demon functions. And as you're listening to the conversation, say they're talking about something you don't care about. You know, they're talking about makeup or something. And so you're ignoring all the details, and you're just listening to the general concept of yeah. what they're saying. You're just tracking the energy. Like, okay, so every time they are talking about this, she is spiking up. And then every time she talks about that, she's spiking down. It's and so the old, first function videos people send is me. seen when the energy gets high. And this is what happens. Up. And then the last function, the, the demon function, before. when that low spike. That doesn't always come out. So that's why I say like in a coffee shop setting, for a lot of people, you won't even hear it. You got to wait for that conversation where somebody starts freaking the fuck out. And just because they're freaking out doesn't mean that's their fourth function. Everybody can freak out about everything. But you're tracking this consistent behavior. Yeah. And YouTube is great because you can get access to hundreds of videos over the course of years of someone's life. And you got to find the video people that are not editing out a lot of their hard times. Right. So when they're crying and they're talking about depression and suicide and all the rest, they have lots of these videos up over a period of years. And so you can really start to Don't see the real person. On and what you'll start to see, for example, this is one of the most clearest ones we saw early on, was the EPs, especially the lead SEs, they just get, they're so full of anxiety. Like that was too. a huge word that all the lead SEs kept saying. I have so much anxiety. Yeah. Why? Because they can't see what's coming next. Demon and I. And then the IJs are always complaining about panic These are attacks. the tidal waves. They feel like they're getting trapped by chaos. And then the EJs are complaining about self-worth, you know, etc. And again, this isn't 110% consistent, but the point is like these problems are not spreading out evenly over a spectrum. Certain problems are clumping around certain... Flow is when you are exercising your savior functions while appropriately managing the stress of the demon functions. What I mean with this is you can't purely chase happiness. That's not going to work. Oh, you can't just do what you find fun all the time and ignore responsibilities and stressors. You're going to find if you try to do that, that it's going to be slowly catching up to you. Stress has a habit of slowly catching up to you. Actually, the more fun things you do, the more you go out, the more you chase your saviors, the more positive and rich your life is, the more stress you're gonna ramp up. And stress is a natural part of life. Happiness and sadness are both mutually important states. States that signify that you are living a life of meaning. You're doing stuff. When you do stuff, there are consequences, and those consequences have to be resolved. The more things you do, the more consequences to deal with. So uh, you're going to have to constantly check in with yourself and recognize the stress that you're ramping up. You're going to have to check your energy while you're doing things. Wait a second, am I taking care of myself in this? Am I uh, looking at my boundaries? Am I mindful of myself in what I'm doing? You're going to have to learn to do this because you can't run with 10 kilograms of 10 tons of stress on your back. You can try, but you're going to fall to the ground every single time. And that's why objective personality type has this concept they call tidal waves. Now, tidal waves are a metaphor for, you know, if you don't do a thing and that thing grows in size and becomes more and more difficult to deal with because you're not doing that thing. You know, the longer you avoid something, the more it grows and the more difficult it becomes to handle. Eventually, you're standing in front of a massive pit and you're like, oh, my God, I have nowhere else to run anymore. Uh, So, yeah, you have to check uh, your stress state and you have to appropriately manage it now the question is how do we do that how do we manage a flow state and happiness while at the same time resolving and dealing with stress we have two different perspectives here some of them let's call them zen masters have said that if what we should be doing is letting go of crap. So Zen masters, they argue you're unhappy, you're in pain, you feel sad because you have too much crap in your life. Let go, clean your room, throw out everything you don't need. The Zen master says, stop worrying, stop stressing, start going inside, stop looking outside, go inside, meditate, do yoga, breathe slow down that's the Zen master's approach and that's an accurate possible way you can take you can let go of things and you can worry less about them you can learn that the things that worry you are not that important you can learn that okay even if i let go of control 
chaos is not going to kill me, <laughs> you know, you can learn these things. Um, but there is an alternative approach to the Zen masters. The ancient Greeks, they believed in something called eudaimonia, and I definitely could not pronounce that either. But eudaimonia, that basically means a life of meaning. Some people think eudaimonia yeah, <laughs> means happiness, but actually what it really means is a life of meaning. And that's a difference, that's an important difference. The ancient Greeks said happiness is not the goal of life at all. Actually, you shouldn't seek to live a problem-free, easy life where everything is great and rainbows and sunshine. Why would you even want that? Instead, you should try to live a life of meaning. And that means you should try to live boldly. You should take risks. You should put yourself out there. You should chase your saviors. You should start on a life mission. You should find your purpose. You should go out and live life as fully and richly as possible, whatever that means to you. And at the same time, you should be facing your demons. You should be standing up to the things in your way that are holding you back. You should be taking care of and taking responsibility for your failures. You should be addressing and confronting your inner pain and sadness. You should be taking time to reflect on yourself and what you're doing. You should seek to live life as fully as possible. And that means to be both happy and sad, to be allowed to be both happy and sad. So that's um, eudaimonia, to live a life of meaning instead of just simple happiness. My question is, what do you think is the right approach? Personally, I'm not near a full or final answer on this. But what has become clear to me is that we do need a comprehensive theory on how to use the cognitive functions and to understand heroes and demons and rivals and saviors and all those concepts. Basically, what do you think you'd need to do in order to feel flow? What do you think you'd need to do in order to appropriately manage both the things in life that make you happy and the things in life that cause you pain and sadness? Now, go back to yourself. Who are you really? And how can you know who you really are? What is it you love to do more than anything else? What is it that tends you to bring you the most stress in life? Ask your friends and family members what they think. See what other people around you are saying. See what they are stressed by. See what they find to be important. And see how you relate to that. How do you feel about that? Track what you like both on your good days and your bad days. See your full personality type. That means don't just see what you're doing the most often, but see all sides of yourself, both what you do on the good days and what you do on the bad days. Don't just look at your surface persona or how you present yourself to the world. Tune out of that. That's not important. That's not going to help you understand what to do in order to feel happier or in order to improve your mental well-being. Ultimately, that's what you can do to begin to truly type yourself. Now, what I've found is a lot of people don't actually know what does make me happy, what does make me sad. I don't know, I don't feel anything. I just feel stuck. And you know, if that's the case, then I would say create the hypothesis, say, okay, I am going to chase after this savior for a week and see what happens. Okay, imagine I would just chase after this savior function or go into this function for a week. What's going to happen? Am I going to feel great or am I going to feel terrible? <laughs> Look at and track and challenge yourself and then study yourself and how you felt while you're doing that. That's my advice to you if you want to type yourself. now. Let me know your thoughts and comments on happiness, flow, the savior and demon state and don't forget to check out Objective Personalities channel. I'll link it down below so you can check out all their videos and advice on personal growth and personality types and Jungian psychology. Thanks for watching and see you all in the next video.
I am going to be doing a full series investigating objective personality and all their theories and methods. So subscribe to see my coming videos and to learn more about my thoughts on objective personality.